Competition, whether it be esports or traditional sports, has always included people that are willing to do whatever it takes to get ahead. While the admins were checking his PC, they found a command prompt window running in the background, which he immediately tried to close. The disgraced American cyclist Lance Armstrong has been stripped of all seven of his Tour de France titles and banned from cycling for life. In esports, in the recent years at least, as things become a little bit more professional, this seemed to have been slowing down. They played every match in the offseason, grinded since October. But lately, the biggest team in League of Legends esports has been the victim of targeted attacks. Last weekend, a suspected DDoS attack brought the LCK to its knees and caused a series to go on for seven hours. You would think that a company as big as Riot would be doing something about this, but so far it's been radio silence. But what's worse, the answer to this might have been in plain sight this entire time. Let me explain. But first, over to my business team. Are you sick of being absolutely joked by League of Legends bugs and not being able to complain about it to your YouTube audience? Well, it's a good thing our player is sponsoring this video, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to bitch about this. Seriously, right? Our player will automatically record all of your best moments, or if you want, your worst moments, because you can customize it however you would like. And then with a single click, or actually probably more like two clicks, but it's still pretty low, you can share it however you'd like too. Everything you need to check him out is down in the description below. Around December last year, after the end of League's last World Championship, Korean players and streamers noticed a sharp increase in the amount of DDoS attacks that would be affecting their games. This would range from pro players like Faker, to Korean streamers like Kim Min Kyo. Something had changed, specifically on the Korean server, seeing as this exploit didn't seem to be affecting anyone else on any other server. Players would be queuing up just to find themselves being repeatedly DDoSed. And just to clarify, a DDoS attack will send a large amount of packets to the target's IP address, overwhelming the server and causing it to lag or, in the most extreme cases, disconnect or crash entirely. As the weeks went on, the problem didn't seem to be going away. No matter how many new accounts were being made, players were still getting hit offline, which led to suspicions arising that a new exploit had been found. In one of the more extreme examples, Kim Min Kyo tried everything from using a VPN to moving house, but nothing worked until he switched to the Chinese server, according to Ashley Kang. Which initially does seem really suspicious, but I'll explain the reason why shortly. Riot ignored this issue for months, despite it being brought up often within the Korean community. And in late February, they paid the price for it, with the hackers turning their sights towards the official Korean Pro League, the LCK. All LCK live game broadcasts have now been cancelled. The reason this was even possible in the first place was because professional league games are not actually played on LAN. They all take place on a private realm called a tournament realm. Although these games are closed off to the public, they're still online at the end of the day, meaning that they were still susceptible to being DDoSed. These attacks went on for around a week, until the LCK released this announcement stating that the LCK would be played on offline servers for the foreseeable future. Which for a billion dollar company is a pretty well overdue addition, but it seems to have solved the issues in the meantime. There was still one more problem though, this was still affecting every other player on the Korean servers, it wasn't just the LCK being attacked. So, while the LCK was safe for the time being, they hadn't actually fixed the core issue, leaving the rest of the server to fend for themselves. Didn't someone show the anti-cheat is a Korean policy and not a riot policy? Source? His ass. Ah uh, well, I have some answers, just don't ask where I've been. T1 were, and still are, copying an extremely large amount of attacks to the point where they apparently can't even play solo queue. Uh, so, how is T1's IP address getting leaked over and over again, allowing people to DDoS them? In this day and age, there's an entire plethora of methods one can use to try and sniff out another's IP address. The old method was pretty simple, because in older games you wouldn't just connect to a server. The game would normally assign someone to be the designated host at random, and because of this, if you really wanted to take a peek behind the curtains, there was nothing to stop you from seeing everyone's information. As time went on, games progressed into using dedicated servers. They would host servers themselves, and everyone else would connect to them. This made it a lot safer for the players, and the main methods from here on out would be to either get the target in a Skype or Discord call where you can pull their IP that way, or you could get them to click a link that's designed to grab the IP for you. 
but in my opinion, I don't think T1 are clicking links in Champion Select for the most part, or at the very least, even if someone had done that before, most IP addresses these days are dynamic, meaning that they'll change on their own every few days. Despite all of that though, they still couldn't play the game without being hit offline. Not only that, but allegedly, due to how much they were DCing during scrims, other teams would just stop playing against them, since it would just eventuate to a waste of time for both sides. Oh, were you getting DLS too? Yeah. From this clip, we can hear Reckless mention that these attacks resulted in the entire office going offline, meaning that this isn't an attack that targets just the league servers. We played our last official game from the office, and right when the game started, our internet went down, it was down for one hour. So the game was paused for one hour during our last game. Somehow, an exploit is being used to grab people's personal IP addresses. And not just one time either, this was happening consistently. By now, my curiosity was piqued, and I knew I had to dig deeper. So let's see, so far we know that this method has something to do with League, it's exclusive to the Korean server, and it hasn't been fixed yet, seeing as T1 are still being hit with attacks and can't play solo queue. T1's general manager released this statement about the matter, quote, Over the past few months, the DDoS attacks have continued targeting our players' streams and personal practice. We've tried several methods to minimize the damage caused by the DDoS attacks by reducing streaming hours and operating flexibly. However, they're still affecting the player's condition and their practice. With that being said, T1 made the call that the league team will not stream for the foreseeable future starting today. It was a difficult decision, seeing as some of the partnership obligations for the streaming contracts won't be met, but it was the right choice in order to maintain our player conditions and time management. We'll check on the counter measurements for DDoS attacks and update our fans about the player's stream schedule once things are stabilised. I would like to express my gratitude, as well as apologise to the fans who have been there for the players even under these unfavourable circumstances. The earliest mentions of a DDoS problem in Korea start around December and January, and since this is only a problem in Korea so far, I had to find something that only Korea had. But how is this possible? All the League clients are the same, apart from the Chinese version, which exists as a separate entity. Or at least that's what I thought, until I stumbled upon this article from 8 years ago, and suddenly the floodgates began to open. In 2016, Riot Korea added a new anti-cheat to the Korean server in an effort to combat the huge amount of scripting taking over the solo queue ladder. In a message from the president of Riot Korea, he said, From January to August this year we have banned over 240,000 accounts for scripting in Korea. However, to assist in our efforts we've been steadily developing a new anti-cheat system since January of this year. Soon, the new anti-cheat system Demacia will be implemented in the Korean server. It's a cooperative effort between Wellbeer and Riot Games to specifically target cheating in League of Legends. There were some rumours about this anti-cheat being implemented in the rest of the servers, which allegedly didn't happen because Riot HQ didn't trust what Demacia actually did, so it never left Korea. Which, given what we know now, is a little bit ironic. The anti-cheat was being developed and ran by a Korean company called Wellbeer, who already had an anti-cheat that was used widely across Asia, being implemented in games such as Black Desert Online and PUBG. If you're one of the people who thought Vanguard was intrusive, then maybe you want to look away for this part. The anti-cheat developed and used by Wellbeer was called XIGN Code 3, or Zigan Code 3, I'm not really too sure how to pronounce this, but I'm just gonna... You know what, from now I'm just gonna call it Zigan code. According to some posts back when it first started showing up, it could read any files that had been opened in the last 48 hours. We don't need to go too in-depth into the specifics of how this anti-cheat works, but what is important to know is that when a user is flagged for suspicious activity, the current date and the player's username, the suspected hack tool and their IP is sent off to Riot. Just food for thought. At the beginning of 2023, Riot revealed they'd been hacked and the attacker had gotten access to their entire code base. While this attack disrupted our build environment and could cause issues in the future, most importantly, we remain confident that no player data or player personal information was compromised. The source code was then put up for sale for approximately $1 million. It's not completely certain whether or not this was actually ever sold, but regardless, we're now beginning to see the consequences of the breach. After a lot of digging, I began to see that a new tool was starting to crop up around the Korean scene that was going by the name Swiss Knife. This tool could pull an IP for a player simply by inputting their in-game name, which is something that shouldn't be possible. Access to this program was being sold through an extremely exclusive website. After paying a certain amount of money, you would get 10 uses of the bot, which was previously being run in the Discord server. If you wanted more access, you could purchase a 30-day pass, which was selling for as much as 1 million Korean won, or roughly 800 USD. But there was still the unanswered question, how was all of this made possible in the first place? Yeah, remember that anti-cheat I mentioned earlier? 
The most plausible theory at this current time is that the implementation of the Demacia, aka Zigan Code 3 anti-cheat, was reverse engineered by whoever managed to get their hands on the source code. After all, it had access to all of the player's information, including their IP address. From here, the hackers found a way to decode the binary file that was returned in the data dump, which, of course, included the IP address of the player. This also explains why the exploit was only available on the Korean server, despite it not having any apparent differences to the clients in the rest of the world at first glance. The LCK games that were being played online had the players' names open for everyone to see, so it was easy enough for the hackers to pull the IP of the server that the games were being played on. There's a lot of speculation around Korean message boards that one of the main ways this tool was being used was to influence the outcome of the pro players' solo queue games, since spending on the outcome of these was extremely popular and potentially very profitable. At some point, people realised they could do the same for LCK games, or maybe they just wanted to feel some sort of recognition. I say that this is all a theory, but that's only because unless we were actually able to speak to the person who created this tool, or someone from Riot Korea decided to be a little bit more transparent, there's no way to really know for sure. However, multiple pictures that have been revealed by those who used the tool, or were inside the Discord server that it was being sold in, or just had some other sort of insider information combine to make a pretty damning case. On a message board called DC Inside, which is sort of like if you combined Reddit and 4chan and then just made a Korean, there was a thread breaking all of this down, which also included screenshots. Early last year, a hacker accessed the Riot database through an SMS sent to Riot employees. The hacker's goal at this time was to access the Vanguard source code for Valorant, because the goal was to create a nuclear weapon. I'm pretty sure they aren't talking about a literal nuclear weapon here by the way, I just thought I should clarify. However, this was not achieved. Instead, they succeeded in stealing the entire source code for League of Legends, LOL 2 Chess, which is TFT, and the anti-cheat program, Zigan Code 3, used throughout Asia. In here, there are claims that the source code did actually end up being sold for just under $1 million. The source code they got for League was useful, however, the anti-cheat source code was the true goldmine. Quote, Zigan Code 3 is an anti-cheat program used throughout Asia. Riot also uses this to collect and examine user information. However, the IP is clearly indicated in the information collected by Zigan Code. Hackers have figured out a way to enable a program to collect a user's IP address by giving them a specific event pattern. Then, it becomes possible to easily obtain the encrypted IP address. Despite all of this, they were still running into the issue of the returned IP being encrypted. But, after a lot of time, and some help from outsiders, they were able to crack it. Funnily enough, the dates from this post, where it seems like they've finally figured out how to decode the IP addresses, coincide very closely with when the DDoS attacks first began. It seems like, for the time being, moving the LCK to offline games has done the trick. But the issue still persists for the players, like those on T1, being unable to play solo queue without having a secret account, and the lack of communication from Riot Korea makes it seem like they either don't know the solution, or worse, they just don't care.